How is your new schedule? Great. What's your first class in the morning? I have math with Mr. Anderson at 8 o'clock. What time do you have lunch? At 12 noon. Really? Me too. Do you have history class in the morning or the afternoon? In the afternoon at 2.15. Oh, what about science? I have science at 9 o'clock. What's your last class? Art. Me too. Great. Oh no, that's the bell. We're late. What's the time? About 11.30. Really? I'm starving. Can I make myself some breakfast? Yes, of course you can. Help yourself. You know where everything is. Thanks. Is there anything else you need? Uh, well, all our clothes are absolutely filthy from all the travelling. May I use your washing machine? Actually, I was just going to put some washing in. But you can use it later if you like. Great, thanks. <laughs> so... What are your plans? Well, I need to look for a job, actually. We spent all our money on the India trip. Oh, it's much colder here than in Delhi. Do you mind if I borrow a jumper? No, not at all. They're in the bottom drawer in our bedroom. Pick whichever one you like. Great. Thanks a lot. Be back in a minute. Dad, I'm bored today. I want to go to a movie. A movie today? Well, I don't know. Here, let me look at the newspaper. Okay. Ah, uh, here's a movie that starts in the afternoon at 2.45. Well, should we take Mommy with us? Yeah. Okay, we have to wait for Mommy because she's at a meeting right now. Okay. All right, and what should we do after we see the movie? Go on a walk. Well, where would you like to go on a walk? Would you like to go down to the beach or through the park? To the beach. To the beach. Well, that sounds great. And then maybe we can go out to eat tonight. Does that sound okay? There are a lot of things I will always remember, such as first day at primary school, holidays abroad and birthday parties. These special moments are all linked up with some celebrations or turning points in my life. Although, these experiences are nice and great to remember, I have realized there are some beautiful experiences gained not only through special occasions, but also through everyday life. Such an experience for me was a voluntary work. Last summer, during the vocations I was working as a volunteer in an elderly home for the aged people. After a conversation with the nurse and the social worker, I was told my job was to take them out for walks and read them newspapers and books. All that might sound a bit boring, but just after a few days it turned out to be quite different. The elderly people accepted me as if I was their friend. They have told me their life stories and achievement. They gave me many advice and warned me from dangers that youth can bring. I have learned so much from them. This was an interesting experience. I was taught about life a lot. And some of them who do not have many visitors I was the only one who they could talk to. I gave them feeling of care and support and they have showed me that with great appreciation. However, I found out that it was them and their gratitude what made me so happy. We've got a free morning tomorrow. What shall we do? Why don't we go on a tour? Mm, I prefer to explore things on my own. It's more fun and you get to meet local people. Maybe, but we haven't got much time. And a tour is a good way to see the sights quickly, don't you agree? Look, here's a leaflet for a city jogging tour. That sounds interesting. But the weather forecast isn't great, and I don't fancy running in the rain. OK, but I still think we should go on a tour. Look, here's another one. It's called East End Explorer, and there's a local person as the tour guide. So we would get to know local people? Yes, and you can go shopping too. OK, you've persuaded me. Let's book it. Great. You won't regret it. Do you have any openings today for an oil change? Yes, we have an opening at 5.30. Can you come back? That's my dinner time. Do you have anything earlier? Uh, we have 3.30 tomorrow afternoon. That works for me. How much do you charge? It's $49.95 for regular and $89.95 for deluxe. Okay, I'll take the regular. See you tomorrow. Now the general weather forecast for the country for tonight. 
The Meteorological Forecasting Division has forecast the weather to be partly to generally cloudy in Province 1 and Madhya Province, along with the hilly region of the country, and it will be partly cloudy to mainly fair in the remaining parts of the country. Similarly, light rain or thunder and lightning are also likely to occur at a few places of Province 1, Madhya Province, and at one or two places of the high hilly region of the rest of the provinces. Did you have a good time during activity week, Tony? Oh yes, it was fantastic. It's such a shame you couldn't come. Well, hopefully, we can all go again sometime. I'd love to. There are so many things to do. I tried boxing this time, but maybe I could try kickboxing if we went again. What did everybody else do? Well, Lucy did ice skating. She's really good, you know. She was skating backwards and doing all sorts of fancy turns. What about Will? He wanted to play water polo, but there were too many people doing that, so he did mountain biking instead. Catherine couldn't decide what she wanted to do, so she tried out all the different ball games. You know, football, hockey. She even played basketball for a bit, I think. I really want to try climbing if I go. Did anyone do that? Yeah, Paul did. He said he really enjoyed it as well. He wanted Helen to go with him, but she was scared. She ended up playing tennis instead. Toads and frogs begin their lives in similar ways. The eggs hatch in or near water and the babies, called tadpoles, spend the first part of their lives living in the water. When they become adults, frogs continue to live in the water, while adult toads usually live on the land. When you come across one of these animals, how can you tell whether it's a toad or a frog? The easiest way is to touch its skin. Frogs have smooth skin, while the skin of toads is generally rough and bumpy. Their shape is somewhat different also, with toads being plumper and broader than frogs. What is a more typical sound on a summer evening than a chorus of croaking frogs and toads? Both of these animals make their croaking sound by inflating a sac in their throat. Hi! Hello! This is Christina. How are you? Oh, I'm great. And you? Oh, I'm great. Do you have any plans this Sunday? Do you want to come to my birthday party? Yes, I'd love to. It's on February 15th. Let me check my calendar, please. Mm -hmm. So, did you say uh, February 15th, Sunday? Yeah, February 15th, Sunday. Yes, I can come. It's going to be at my place. My address is 104 South 5th Street. 104 South 5th? Okay, okay. Yes, great. Uh, by the way, what should I bring to your party? Come empty-handed, it's just my birthday. No, really, what should I bring? Well, I don't know, maybe some drinks or snacks. Sirubari village is located in Senja district, which lies in the southwest of Pokhara. It is situated at a height of 1,700 meters from sea level. Sirubari is one of the pioneers to introduce the concept of community-based homestays for the sustainable tourism development in Nepal. Sirubari began community-based tourism in 1997. The visitors can reach the village either by using public buses or private vehicles. The driving distance from Pokhara to Sirabari is about 45 kilometers and takes about two hours to reach the village. Trekking lovers can have a half-day walk from Negdada, a place along Siddhartha Highway to reach the village. Sirabari offers unspoiled Gorang culture and heritage to the visitors. A tourism management committee has been formed, which is responsible for welcoming the tourists and managing accommodation, sightseeing, and guiding. The village consists of 60 households. The local people themselves provide food and lodging facilities to the tourists at their homes. Sirabari Village Tourism was awarded the PATA Gold Award 2001 in recognition of its efforts to preserve the local culture and heritage. I would like to tell you a little bit about some things I like and then a little bit about some things I don't like. First of all, I really enjoy exercising. Some of my favorite types of exercise are swimming, especially in rivers in the country and in big oceans, 
because I like to jump over the waves. I also really enjoy dancing. I like dancing to American music because that's what I know best. And I also like Southern Moraine, which is a more Latin types of music. I also like to walk in the woods and to explore. I like to walk through forests and I like to hear rivers. I enjoy meeting new people, too. I like to find out about different ways of life, what different people think, where they're from, and how they live. Probably one of my favorite things is animals. I really love dogs and cats and horses. When I was little, I always tried to talk my mom into letting me have more animals, but usually, she wouldn't. So I think now that I'm going to have my own house, I'll try to get lots of animals. Some things that I don't really like are rude people. Sometimes people are not very nice to strangers, and that makes me feel bad. I also don't really like driving. I tend to get pretty bored in the car and it seems like it just takes a long time to get there. One final thing I don't really like is waiting. Sometimes I'm not a very patient person and I just like to hurry things up. I have to make dinner tonight. I hope you remembered. Oops, I forgot, actually. What do you want to make? Well, I thought we could make that apple pie we did last time. What do you think? Yeah, okay. That's a good idea. Do we have everything we need? Hmm. Let's go and have a look in the kitchen. Right. First, of course, we need some apples. Do we have any? Yes, we have a lot of apples. I bought ten only yesterday. How many do we have to use? I think six large apples will be fine. Now, is there any flour? We have to use two and a half cups of flour. How much do we have? I think we'll have to buy some flour. We don't have much. Maybe only 200 grams. I'll start a shopping list, OK? Flour. What about cinnamon and nutmeg? Well, for this recipe, we only need a little cinnamon and nutmeg. How much do we have? Oh, these containers are both full, so we don't need any more. Now, we need a little salt. OK, we have a lot of salt. And quite a lot of sugar. Hmm, it says in the recipe about a cup. Oh, we don't have any sugar. We can't make apple pie without sugar. Write sugar on the shopping list. OK, I've got it. We need a little butter too. Did you buy any butter yesterday at the store? No, I didn't get any. How much do we need for the recipe? Well, it says a 100 grams. I think we have some butter in the fridge. Yes, we don't have much, but there's enough. OK, I will go to the store and buy these things we need, and we can start when I return. Fine, I'll come with you. I work at a hospital. I'm not a doctor or a nurse. I'm a technician. I look after the computers. Everyone uses them in the hospital. Nurses, doctors, receptionists, too. It's important that they all work properly, so that's my job. I start work at half past eight in the morning. When I arrive, I find out if there are any problems. Sometimes problems happen in the night. The workers always go home at nine o'clock in the morning, so I have half an hour to talk to them about any problems before they go home. I finish work at five o'clock, but usually I'm too busy to go home then. I can't leave when I am halfway through a job. Usually, I don't leave work until half past five. Then the roads are really busy and it takes me one hour to get home. So I get home at half past six. Lots of people at the hospital cycle to work because parking a car is expensive there. I tried cycling to work but I didn't like it. I get too tired and I hate cycling in bad weather. So I take the bus. That way I can relax and read emails or listen to music on the way. It's really small and three other people use it too. I'd like a bigger place, but it's not possible. But I don't complain much. It's a nice job and the pay is good. So I am lucky. Zoos. Zoos are very interesting, but I'm not sure if I agree with them. I like looking at the animals, 
but I always feel sorry for them. They usually look sad. Most of the time they are in tiny cages. They must miss the wild. I think animals need freedom as much as we do. Zoo bosses argue zoos are an important way of educating children. Of course that's true. However, with the internet and television documentaries, there are many other ways children can learn about animals. Zoos also argue they are necessary to save endangered species. That may be true too, but most of the animals in zoos are not in danger of extinction. I suppose zoos are okay if they only have endangered animals and breed them for the wild. This happened when I was 17 years old. I was heading for the gym. It was Sunday, and I had just missed my bus, so I had to wait longer for another one. I would have called my parents but they were out for the evening and a taxi charged more. So I decided to wait in the bus shelter. It was a cold night. My bus was taking longer than usual. So I got my phone out and listened to some music. All of a sudden, I noticed something out of the corner of my eyes. It was a frightening guy dressed in thick layers of clothing, walking slowly towards me. I knew staring at him would draw more attention, so I just focused on my phone. He sat down at the other end of the shelter and just stared at me. He seemed like he was either drunk or on drugs. He then asked, when is the bus coming? I took out my earphones and said I think it's delayed because of the snow. He stared at me for a while. After a couple of minutes, I took another look. He had moved closer to me. I looked away for a second then heard the sound of him coming even closer. I turned to him and said, are you okay there? He stared at me with his shiny eyes. Immediately I grabbed my bag and ran trying my hardest not to look back. I kept going until I got to the next bus stop. I turned around to check to see if he was there. He was gone, so I went to sit down. Feeling relieved, I rested my head on the back of the glass and waited for the bus. Hi Laura, come in. Hi, thanks. Hey, what a lovely dress. Thanks. It's new. Can I take your coat? Yes, thank you. Shall I take your bag too? No, it's okay, thanks. I've got my mobile in here. <laughs> Let's go into the living room. <sighs> Have a seat. Would you like anything to drink? We've got some orange juice in the fridge. Yes, that'd be great. How about some cake? No, thanks. I'm fine. I'm not hungry at the moment. <sighs> Here you are. Right. I've got the film ready. Shall I start it now? Yes, sure. What a beautiful day. Did you know Sweden was voted the best place in the world to live? Sweden? I wonder why it was voted the number one place in the world to live. I read that it's really safe and clean. I've never been to Sweden, but in my opinion, Canada seems like the best place to live. What makes you think that? Well, first of all, it's also safe and clean like Sweden. There are lots of parks and nature. Yes, that's true. But it's really cold. Yes, the winter is cold. The summertime is perfect. The price of living in Sweden is also reasonable compared to other countries in Europe. I think Canada is also pretty reasonable. Yes, I agree. I went there last year and the hotels and restaurants weren't very expensive. Everybody is really friendly and outgoing as well. The food is quite tasty, too. There's a great selection of international foods. I want to move to Canada someday. Welcome to our summary of Florida local news. Today, we have two stories of teenage heroes who stopped very different crimes this week. Tracy, can you tell us what you discovered there? Sure I can, Ted. The first story took place in Tampa. 13-year-old Ralph Black came home from school and found a robber in the living room. Earlier, 
I asked him what it had felt like when he saw the robber, and I also asked him if he'd been scared. He admitted that he'd been a little scared. Well, I walked in and there's this guy, a total stranger, standing in the middle of the room. He saw me and ran straight out the door. I don't know why, but I decided to follow him all the way to the library. And this is what he said when I asked him how he had caught the robber. It was weird. Nobody wanted to help me at first. The police only arrested the man at the library after I insisted that he was a robber. Thanks to Ralph's bravery, the family got their property back, and the robber received a fine. Thanks, Tracy. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>